He was not going to come forward to save my life and tell me what really happened there. He would probably be happy if I died with this terrible guilt. Therefore, Prince, give me permission to escape. If possible, I will go to Elam and search for the Pandya clan Manamuti and the Diamond Harem there. Or kill me here with your hand sword. Don't subject me to the fate of being washed in the water at the crossroads, bearing the blame of killing their Tamayanar who loved me immeasurably. How much more comforting would it be for me to die by the sword of their hand? Or if he dies at the hands of these Kajumbalar Gomas, there is no harm. He and his holy father have taken mercy on this orphan and brought him to this world who had gone to the gates of the heaven and back again. I'm not going to thank them for this. When Vandiyathevan said this, Vanati said to the prince, Listen, sir. Listen for yourself. This pure warrior has no desire to stand in front of his enemies on the battlefield and fight to reach the hero's paradise. He is penanced to die by drinking poison from the hands of women. She said. Prince. It seems that these people will kill me with the slanderous language that they say against me. Isn't it more special that they should die by drinking and drinking by hand? Said Vandiyathevan, the hero of the monkey clan. Arulmazai Varmer was listening to all these talks with only half attention. His mind seemed to be seriously thinking about something else. Suddenly he jumped up and stood up and said, Aha! I have decided. I will crown myself as the emperor of the Chola country. The people of the country and the city are chanting, May Arulmaz Hivarman be crowned. That is the wish of the warriors. I will fulfill the wish of all of them. Do you know why? You are blameless. It is for liberation. So let me be slandered. It will not affect me. Some petty princes who are hostile to me may try to spread that slander. But people will not believe it. If petty princes dare to accuse me, it goes back to them. I can retort that the princes invited him to a feast at the Kadampur mansion and killed him. I can punish them all for such betrayal of trust and betrayal of royalty. Anyway. I'm going to crown myself. My father, I will walk even if it is against their wishes. But I cannot bear to see you suffer any harm, he said. Anyway, I'm going to crown myself. My father, I will walk even if it is against their wishes. But I cannot bear to see you suffer any harm, he said. Anyway, I'm going to crown myself. My father, I will walk even if it is against their wishes. But I cannot bear to see you suffer any harm, he said. Vanati said with a glee, wouldn't the younger brat be here to hear these words of yours? Say these words once in his presence. She said. What's one time? I say many times. I'll do the same thing. Said Pani's Selvar. Vandiyadeva wiped the tears from his eyes and said, Sir. If you change your mind and come before the crown because of me, poor and orphaned, it will be a blessing for the Chola nation. If I am telling the truth, as far as I know Madhurand Hakadeva, he is not at all worthy to be crowned. He travels in the mud and plots for the kingdom like women. Is a person who engages in efforts fit to rule an empire? Is it fair for such a cowardly person to climb the Chola throne decorated by Vijayalaya Chola and Parintaka Chola? No wonder the people of this country do not like this. He said with a soft voice. It seems that Madhurantak Deva himself has magically disappeared upon realizing this. Vanatha said. Yes, yes. I'm going to give up trying to find him. I'm going to crown myself. Arulmas Hivarmar said. Hearing this, Kuntava entered the room and said, Brother. Give up that desire. You have no lion, no crown. Have you forgotten that my dear friend Vanatha has vowed not to climb the Lion of Tanjore? I will never see you crowning yourself without her by keeping another girl beside you. You can't watch with your eyes. She said. Sister. Only then will they close their eyes. I will close their eyes and help them. Vanatha said. Pani Selvar looked at Kundave and said, Sister, for their friend's vow. Can the Chola kingdom go on without a king? 
Our father insists on leaving the royal burden behind and going to Kanchi. Madhuranthak Deva has mysteriously disappeared. What is the other way? Anyway, it seems that I will not be crowned without the crown. Don't they know that there is only one turmoil in the country about rights? How long can they keep this turmoil going? Said. Brother. It's a happy marriage. I came running to tell you that. The hidden god Madhuranthak has appeared. The penance done by the ancestors of the Chola clan has not gone in vain. You don't have to worry about what will happen to the kingdom. Even if he says no, we must be stubborn and crown him. Said I lay Aparthai. His excitement took the other three by surprise. It is true that for some days Kundave Prati was favourable for the coronation of Madhurand Hagar. But he has never shown himself to be so enthusiastic about it. Pani Selvar suppressed his astonishment at that, goddess. Where was he hiding? Why? How did he emerge? He asked. Even though he was close to us, we were unable to see him. Brother. Only the one born in the womb of Sempiyan Madhavi is the one who is fit to climb the Chola Singhadam. This kingdom is rightfully due to your stepfather. Give up the idea that you can fabricate a crown. Listen to a miracle. Brother. Four days ago, our stepfather will have a big land. Came. One of the murderers aimed to throw a dagger at him. If he had thrown it, Madhurand Hakativar's life would have been lost. There would have been another untimely death in the Chola clan. Do you know who was the warrior who prevented such an accident? Do you know who dared to give his life and saved our grandfather? Saying that, Ilay Aprati turned his white eyes to Vandiyadev Peril. The love and passion, the gratitude and the respect in those eyes. Pawnee's brother-in-law, deeply in wonder, said, What is this, sister? I don't understand. Didn't my friend tell me about this? Said. He would not have said it because he himself would not have felt the glory of what he had done. He did not know how much the Chola clan owed him. Sister. You talk like riddles? Everything is a mystery. It would be better if you explain instead of confusing us in vain. How, where, and from what kind of danger did this warrior of the monkey clan save Madhurandaka? Where is Madhurandaka Thivar now? Asked the prince. Pani Selva. Here he will be here in a few seconds. Knowing that you have come here, I have asked you to bring him here. He will find out by word of mouth. Or ask the flower girl who has seen everything and find out. Here they are coming. Yes, now to the room. Footsteps were heard outside. After a while, four people came in. Chief Minister Anuradhar, Alvar Kadian, Punguzali, and Santhan Amuthan came. Only Santhan Amuthan was dressed strangely. He wore a princely crown on his head, a silk padambaram and ornaments belonging to the royal clan. The people inside looked at the team that entered the room with some surprise. Sister. Did you say that Madhurand Hakar will come? Shall we see him? Arom as I said. Brother. Here he is standing in front of you wearing a princely crown. This is the son of Kandaradathar, the sage of Shiva, who was born in the womb of Sempiyan Madhavi. He is the devotee of Shiv for all of us. All this time he lived as an agnostic under the name of Sendan Amuthan. He was born today because of the blessing of the Chola clan. Yesterday, one of the Kodi ones tried to stab him with a spear. This Vanara warrior helped the Chola clan incomparably. This valiant Vaishnava, a disciple of our chief minister, brought him into the fort regardless of the fact that he was a Saivar. At this time Tirumala interrupted and said, Devi. I do not want to help Ikai War in any way. I disguised him and brought him on an elephant so that it would be possible for him to bring the Valadha prince to the palanquin. Can we forget that Pungazali also took it from Kadakare to Nagapatanam? Today we also learn through Sembian Mathavi's words that this is really our Siddhapa. He also agreed. Brother. I welcome him to our palace on this auspicious day. No no. Welcome to his own palace. 
I invite those who have lived apart from us for so long to join our family today. One who has been separated for so many days should celebrate the Vaibhava with us as much as possible. This is the right time. The more we keep this message to ourselves, the better. So we can conduct this Vaibhava within ourselves. Dad. Come this way. We could not express our happiness in any other way to join the Collar clan today after the division of Nedu tomorrow. When my dear brothers go to foreign places and when they come back, I used to apply Thirunira Puja and Kungamatilak on their foreheads. Likewise, I will put Thirunir and Kungam on the foreheads of those who have returned today. After saying this, Madhuran Thakan, who had been known as Ilaya Prati Kundave Devi Amuthan for all this time, put Thirunir and Kungam on his forehead. Then the chief minister Anuradha said, Long live the appearance of the Chola clan. Madhuran Hakativar. ACI said. Long live. All Workadian echoed with confidence. Aromas Hivarma was filled with astonishment when Kundave first started speaking. There was a little doubt in it. He even thought that this was all a game of his father, or that he was talking about some important cause. By and by, his doubt was over. He knew that the words of Goddess Kuntave were the words of love that came from the innermost part of the heart. The flood of emotions that surged in the heart of the one he greatly admired overwhelmed him too. When Kuntave Devi Tilakam went to Arulmas Hithavar Sendan Amuthan and said, Chitapa. I loved you earlier. I thought you might not be my brothers. It seems that the blood relationship between us gave me such a feeling. Saying that, Sendan hugged Amudan and burst into tears. Vandiyathevan said, Aha! I had a little doubt earlier. I thought that the hereditary warrior royal family must be hiding somewhere in the devotee of Shiva named Sinthan Amuthan. Otherwise, would he have given me shelter and supported me, who came without a city and name, and helped me run away from the city? Emperor's son, please do me the favor you did me last time again. Please bless me. I feel sad that I was not allowed to see their crowning ceremony. What can I do? I am very happy about one thing. Even I am not so satisfied with the Chola Empire being owned by Santhana Mudanar. I am happy with the fact that Punghuali Amai, who helped me cross the ocean, will become the queen. The dream of Samadra Kumari. He didn't expect it to happen so soon. He said. Kundave interrupted, Sir. It would be better if you did not talk so much for a few more days. Then you will be able to run quickly even if you have to flee. She said. Then, brother. Aromazai. Now we know why our great-grandmother objected to the coronation of her son all this time. Even we were not satisfied with the coronation of old Madhurand Hakar. He did not have the qualities that one born in the Virachola clan should have. No matter how hard our grandmother tried, Shiva's devotion did not stick in him. Valor is not even medicine for him. Even so, we have made up our minds to crown him. We are not only satisfied to crown this new Madhurand Hagar, but we are also full of joy and exultation. I want to see the rising of Punghuali Singh Gadanam, who saved you and Valative Prince from drowning in the middle of the ocean. Our Prime Minister should make the necessary arrangements immediately. She said. Goddess. The great Palyavatare must keep his mind and tell what happened in the Kadampur mansion. We want to know what happened to the old Madhurand Hakativar. How can we set a date for the Makodabi Shekham before these two things happen? Said Anuradha. I'll ask the great reaper. It's your responsibility to find the old brewer. Said Kundave. That's when I knew the truth. I surmised the reason for the love shown to me by the world-admired champion Mathavi. He said to me one day, Son. I wanted to call it that. That wish has been fulfilled today. I want nothing more. The chief minister interrupted and said, Young man. It is not a question of whether you like it or not. You should think about what is fair and what is proper. Said. Aha. Uh -huh. Think well. As far as I am concerned there is no need to think. I have already thought decisively and decided. 
Pungujali told me many times that I am going to marry a prince and ascend to the throne. The Chola Empire is mine. My heart and tongue throbbed to say that. I controlled that passion. I prayed to God that the desire of Nadal would never take refuge in my heart. I was determined to sacrifice the flower to fulfill that zeal. Fortunately, this Samathra Kumari gave up her undeserving desire and offered to marry this poor temple devotee. Punguzali interrupted here and said, Sir! How did you say that I am not worthy of desire? I am worthy to become the ruler of the three worlds. Even so, I agreed to marry them and live by tying pumalas and spend my life running away. She said. Say that, flower girl. This is enough to establish your merit. How do merit and disqualification come about? Birth equals all life. That is the Tamil mystery of the divine poet. Therefore, don't give up your old mindset now. Join us and tell this emperor's son who is going to take you by the hand. Dad. Even after they knew the truth of their birth they were zealous not to have this kingdom. It shows their innate generosity. Now we all say, the emperor says, the prime minister says, me and my brother say. My friend Vanatha says and agrees to change her great father's mind. Why should you refuse now, said the younger Prati Kundave Devi. Are you going to make me the owner of all that hate? Don't. Don't. Do me no such great harm. Have I done any harm to any of you? Before any of the others could reply, Ponian Selvar raised his head majestically and said, Let this talk stop. When you entered this room, I was saying to Vandiyadeva that I am going to crown the Chola kingdom. I will do it. I also learned the opinion of this good friend who rose in the womb of the old emperor. No more talk of kingdom rights, said.